It's 19 hours. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My check, can everyone hear me? Hello? Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. You are audible. It's only that people are on mute. Oh, we are audible. Yes. Great. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Mwangi Chege from Outburst. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the session tonight. And uh, uh, we will start in a few minutes. I think people are still uh, being admitted uh, to, to, to the meeting. So let's give them another about five minutes and then we'll be ready to start. Okay. But uh, for those who are already tuned in, we want to say thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, at the candid conversation and we will be having fun uh, most of us are probably at home so sit back relax enjoy we have great panelists tonight and we are certainly going to have a good time uh, so i'll give us another few you can put uh, off your video okay or mute and and mute and then we will be on in a few minutes Thank you. We'll be on in another in another five and we will start. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining in, tuning in. Uh, Ms. Mongege from Outburst, and uh, welcome to the candid conversation this evening. I'm uh, so happy to, uh, to see all of you. Karibuni sana. Uh, tonight we are going to handle the topic nutrition and cancer in COVID-19 times. We have uh, great panelists and I believe uh, that we're having we are going to have an awesome awesome evening uh, so if you are at home kindly relax uh, take your time enjoy if you are on the road you could probably be 
uh, please don't put on the video. Uh, just listen in, tune in, and enjoy. If you're in the office, uh, thank you for tuning in. Wherever you are, uh, you can you can let us know where you're listening as fr you're listening from on the chat box. Kindly, kindly type in. Uh, where you're listening as from, where you're tuning in from, and we'll be so happy to know uh, who is tuned in and where from. So Karibuni Sana, if you are happy to be in the candid conversation tonight, uh, kindly type the word happy and let me see how many are happy tonight. Uh, kindly go ahead and just type in the word happy uh, on the chat. Uh, Regina Gitao, I can see you are happy, I can see that. I thank you so very much. Uh, if you're happy and you know, let me see, let me see you chat the word happy, okay? Uh, thank you, Lucy Favor. I can see happy. SK, you are happy in capital letters. You must be very happy. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are grateful. I can see uh, someone with an ITEL A16. You're happy. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, grateful that you are. You have tuned in. Uh, Dr. Mary Mogambi, you are elated. Oh, Awesome, I like that word. Uh, Karen Joki, Karen Joki, you're saying super happy. Awesome, okay. Uh, we, want to, we want to push in some positive energy uh, here tonight. Uh, I know it's tough to, to talk about uh, cancer and COVID-19 all in one in this season, but hey guys, this is where we are, uh, what to do, but still be happy about it because we believe that we are in these times, in this season for a reason, and, and, and let's stay happy, let's push in some positive vibe, uh, because we, I believe, I believe that as we do that, uh, we also get, get better, we, 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 you are probably not feeling well when you tune in here uh, you you'll get well so speedily will not believe it to call candid conversation uh, that you will be elated as it was so to say so thank you so much for tuning in tonight uh, we have two panelists we have uh, Magdalene Mbogwa who is a survivor she has an awesome awesome story uh, that she will tell us tonight uh, we also have a nutritionist and Katha Mwanda uh, who is a nutritionist consultant to pro listening to the you you're not participate courage all of your videos the panelists it encourages me to see your beautiful face your happy face it, it just encourages us and makes the time go so very fast again if you uh, we also want to ask that you put your 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 device on mute okay uh, so so that so that we uh, we don't get too many interruptions uh, so that all of us can can at least enjoy and 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 like i say push some positive energy guys i will encourage all of us if, if you have a remark kindly put it down on the chat and we'll be reading it out loud and and clear and so thank you so much for tuning in uh, so as we start i believe that you can see me uh, kindly just make a uh, just make small circle with your with your pointing finger and your thumb so make a circle like this make a circle make a circle all right make a circle like that are you there okay so make a circle and and then and then look through the circle look through the circle look through the circle samuel mboro good evening thank you for tuning in we are grateful asante sana uh, thank you for joining uh, candid conversation so put your put your look look through your the circle like that and then and then close one eye close this other eye close it yeah if you are not able to wink while closing just uh, put the other hand the right there and you will it will make sure that you have closed and then this one you're looking through are you there all right i want you to zoom out zoom out 
and zoom out on the face that you like on your screen. Zoom out on the face that you like on the screen. Zoom all the way out and you're looking through uh, that hole, make it small, but you, you, you just zoom out to the face, the happiest face that you can see on the screen. All right? You, are you liking that face? Okay. Uh, zoom all the way out until you can just see their, uh, their, their nose only, their nose only, their nose only. Awesome. Okay. Can you make the circle a little bigger? And you will notice that more faces have gone through that hole. You can see more faces. And then if you zoom in like that, you are seeing more faces and you're seeing the, probably you're now seeing the, the whole screen. And hopefully if you zoom all the way back in and the circle is big, you'll not only see the screen, but you will see the whole device and probably even the furniture in your, in your, in your, in your room uh, and, and, and much more, much more, okay? All right, now put that, uh, put that uh, circle right there on your elbow. Put it on your elbow right there. Put it on your elbow. Put it on your elbow, that circle. Put it on your elbow right there, on your elbow. Okay, I'll just confusing you. The elbow is right there. The elbow is there. Okay, the elbow, the elbow. The elbow is right there. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that's a quick exercise. I uh, just to let you know that uh, in candid conversation, what we are trying to do is, is enlarge our frame, okay? Uh, so that we don't just look at life in our own perspective, but as we bring in most, more panelists uh, over time, your, your, your frame of life is so you can see in a wider perspective, uh, uh, you can you can okay uh, start uh, questioning one or two things, uh, but also pick up stories and pick up some inspiration and start applying them uh, to your life. And so and so th that's what we are trying to do with candid conversation. Uh, top is nutrition and cancer in COVID nineteen times. So I want to say karibu sana. A sister Susan Tanui uh, from Our Lady Hospice in the Giolimuru. She is here. She is tuned in uh, to say Karibu Sana. Karibu Sana, Nelly, uh, Teresina are doing amazing. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, we are so very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I want us to start in another. Uh, uh, two or three minutes, two or three minutes, I'll, I'll be inviting our, our, our first panelists for tonight, okay? Uh, but, but before we do that, could you kindly type in what is the most challenging thing uh, that you've gone through in this season? Kindly type, what is the most challenging thing? One challenge, the, the greatest challenge uh, that you have gone through uh, in this COVID-19 season. Let me see. Uh, people shoot what uh, has been the most challenging thing i know all of us have had our own challenges you know uh, working from home has not been that easy okay uh, but what has been the most challenging thing uh, for me i have kids and one of the things i've realized i've come to appreciate teachers i have tried to be a teacher a day or two a Staff is staff. I, I just cannot. Okay. And so it has been one of the challenges, uh, but I thank God for teachers. So I need to see what has been your one of the greatest challenges. I know we have had different challenges, but what is one of your challenges? Kindly type, kindly type. I, I want to I want to see that on the on the on the on the panel. And then we'll we'll invite our panelists tonight. Uh, but let me see what has been one of your challenges in this COVID-19 season. We, ha we, ha we are about what? Uh, starting from uh, mid-March, uh, mid uh, so we have April, May, June, July, August, about almost four to five months. Uh, but you know what, guys? We are doing well. So we are still here because you are, you are successful. You are a survivor. You are doing great. Okay, Violet is saying, social distancing with the people you love that is difficult i remember uh when when covid 19 just started and I, I i had gone to visit my sister and we were talking like like you know uh, 50 meters away from each other it has not been easy okay uh, magdalene says we're uh, not being able to visit my folks tough okay uh, because they're most likely 
more than 58 years old, you know, we want them alive and so it's been tough. Anne is saying wearing a mask most of the time, it is a tough one, wearing a mask. Working home with children, pres uh, Priska, Priska. Pole sana, uh, we have to keep doing it, you know, uh, and find a way of doing it, okay? Uh, Sonny is saying not having physical meetings and classes. Uh, tough. Now we have to, changing times, they call for, for, for us to change. Uh, someone is saying, not shaking hands and hugging. Oh, oh, I feel you. I feel you, my brother. I feel you. Okay, Regina, not being able to hug loved ones and friends. Regina, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. It's been tough. Not being able to visit the sick admitted at the hospital, especially family. Lucy, that is a tough one. That's a tough one. Okay, Monica is saying working and taking care of COVID positive patients, fearing to catch it. Polesana, uh, but keep at it. We believe that uh, you will be protected as you do what you do. Guys, uh, let's stay positive, like I said. Uh, and then uh, we are also just, we keep telling each other, let's protect each other. Let's take care of one another. Put on your mask uh, and, and uh, social distance. We love each other. But you know what? The, the best way to show love this season is to one another. make sure that we are all, we all stay alive. Okay? Uh, 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 a Chinese entrepreneur uh, has, has, uh, has, I have seen their tweet. They say, uh, that that the most successful person, the most successful person this year is the person who is is healthy. Okay, uh, so let's keep uh, staying healthy and and let's and let's enjoy. Sally, pole double uh, bus fare. Oh, pole sana, pole sana. I, I know how it feels, you know. Uh, but look at the positive side. Double bus fare. I keep comfortable, you know, uh, uh, when it's not too late. Matatu uh, is a, it's a van, Tunabebo come a tourist, and so, and so we, let's look at these things positively, uh, tough that the, 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 the fares have doubled up, but what to say. Thank you guys for tuning in. I want to say Karibu Sa. Like I said before, my name is Mwangi Chege from Outburst, and at Outburst, we, we are a training consultancy firm. We also have a, 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 a uh, an arm of events, okay, and an arm of tours, so we are like a three-legged stool, but over time we looked and we thought, what can we do to give back to society, apart from just thinking of what products to push, how much money to make, we thought, no, 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 uh, let's look back and have an impact in, in society, and we started what is called the Boot Cancer Challenge. Uh, so the Boot Cancer Challenge has been an annual event creating awareness uh, uh, in the area of uh, cancer and we have been successful because of our partners who have over the years partnered with us uh, to push the agenda of creating uh, uh, awareness okay and so this year has been different like it is for all of us we have also uh, uh, changed and we have decided to go virtual, okay? Uh, so thank you. As we do, as we do our candid conversation, it's one of, of the places, to, uh, like I said, we want to spread positivity. Last we had a, a counselor who was great, taught us so many things. Uh, we had someone uh, talking to us on taking care of uh, uh, cancer patients in, in this uh, COVID-19 times, uh, and we, we learned, we learned a lot, I must confess. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Magdalene Mbogwa, who is a parent uh, uh, of, of two kids, a boy and a girl. Uh, she is married. Uh, she is also a parent to many, 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 many girls because she is uh, a principal at Loreto. And so we, uh, we are glad to have her on as a panelist tonight. Uh, Magdalene Bogua is also 
a cancer survivor. I know her story. I want her to share with us her story tonight uh, so that you can be inspired. You can uh, realize that cancer is not a death sentence. And, and, and I believe that COVID-19 is not a death sentence either. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, put your hands together like this and welcome Magdalene Bogwa. Karibu sana, Madam Magdalene Bogwa. Uh, kindly share with us your story. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. I'm happy to be here to share my story, to talk candidly at this uh, time. And my greatest joy is that I am here not as a fighter, but as a survivor. And I just want to encourage everybody and uh, we know that it is doable. You do not need to lose hope. It is doable. It's not a death sentence. Um, my, my journey began some time back in 2016, that is in October, when I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. Um, it, it really was a tough moment for me. I'm one of those guys who hardly go to hospital when I, I just maybe have a common cold, take care of it with ginger, honey, lemon. So for me, hospital was not a place that I, I mean, I was used to or I, I used to go. Then um, cancer, yes, I knew about cancer. I had heard so much about cancer. But you know, before you are a victim, it is always out there. But when it gets closer home, then now that's when you know things, things are really, are really thick. So it was uh, really scary because always when you hear, you've heard so many stories about cancer, about uh, um, cancer patients, what you need to go through and what the family has to go through. So it was really, really a tough moment. And uh, what made it worse is uh, when, when I realized, okay, it just happened one evening, I just did a, a cross-examination, I checked and I felt a lump, and I just went to hospital the following day. And uh, when I went to hospital, the doctor said I needed to do a mammogram, I did a mammogram. And then after that, I was told now to see um, a breast specialist. And he's the one who said, um, from what he can see, I need to do a biopsy. So when I did the biopsy, it took about like uh, one week. And then now the results were out. So I went to see the doctor. And all this time, you know, it's, you're just thinking, I mean, it can't be. It's, it's just something out there. So um, when I went to see that doctor, I remember I, was, I, I went with my sister and my friend. And the doctor now, you know, told me very many, I mean, big words and all. I just told him, just tell me, just in simple terms, what you need to know about. He said, okay, I'm going to do that. And he just told me that I have, uh, I have cancer. From the results, I have uh, cancer. And uh, what even shocked me more was when he told me that, and you're not, on, you're not in stage one. Then he said, what you need to do, you need to do a scan so that we can establish the stage. And so he's for us. That was the worst moment in my life. So as I went home and I was thinking, so you're thinking you could be, I mean, he said I'm not in stage one, so it could be two. I could be told I have uh, three months to leave or whatever. So many things were just running uh, through my mind. But I just thank God I went through that evening. The following day I went and that's when I, I was told that I am in stage three. And I needed to, now he told me exactly what I need to do. Actually, when he told me, so surprisingly, I was a bit calm. So when, I, when he just told me, okay, it's stage three and we need to start treatment, I just said, okay, so what do I need to do? And uh, he just told me I have to go full cycle. He told me I'll have to do um, chemotherapy to shrink the lump. Then I will have to do surgery and I have to do um, radio. So, and, and that was it. And I, from there, then on, I just decided, okay, this is it. I, I, I'm in it and I need to really get out of it. I was so anxious to get out of it. And I remember what the, what the doctor told me. He just said, you know, Magdalene, uh, cancer is serious and it, it, it really takes a toll, but your mindset will determine which way this will go. And I hang on to that. When he told me my mindset, I hung on to that. And I started now fighting even with my mind that I told myself, you know, this thing, I have to um, get over it. 
I will do whatever the doctor tells me to do and I will just keep a positive mind. So the first thing I just accepted, of course it was tough. When you think about it, I mean, okay, you will try and tell yourself that um, you can do this, um, but you know, they are at the back of your mind you're thinking, you have had stories about cancer, you have seen people with cancer, and, and the most, uh, can I say the most, th the things that disturb one, and for somebody like me, I was just thinking, what about my children? What about my husband? In school, girls, the way I keep on telling them that, you know, tough times come, storms come, but you can't, you have to keep your head above the water. So I'm wondering, am I, am I really going to be able to do all that? But I thank God I, I managed to start my treatment. I started the chemotherapies. Of course, they were really, really harsh and really... Um, they would put me down. So like I used to do, I did six chemotherapies and I used to go after every three weeks. So I would be down for one week and uh, two weeks, then I go to work. I try and really try and be strong, eat what I needed to eat so that I can be strong enough for the next. And the cycle went uh, that way. Um, uh, the, the most, um, can I say, the, the most difficult uh, thing is when you hear what uh, people are telling you, people have all sorts of ideas, people have, um, um, what can I say, they have all this advice to give you, and, and that was the most, uh, can I say, um, challenging, a challenging moment for me. This one will tell you, oh, can you eat, I don't know, raw purpose, another one will say, no, don't, don't take this. Another one will tell you to take, when you ask the doctor, the doctor said, tells me, who told you? Like I would tell the doctor, okay, now I can't, I can't, I mean, like I, you avoid dairy, you know, dairy products, you avoid milk. And every time I would go to the doctor, he says, so who told you? Can you eat? Just eat. Can you eat? So it was a really um, confusing moment. Another time is, you see, I mean, okay, in terms of nutrition, of course, very confusing because the nutritionist will tell you this, the doctor will tell you something different. You will Google, you will read, and you're also trying to, you know, see what you need to do. So a, a very confusing moment then. Of course, another um, challenge was uh, when now you're trying to decide what to do. Okay, yes, the treatment is here. You need to do whatever it is that you need to do. So where do you do your treatment? So there are all those old people say, no, 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 just go to India. Others will say, no, you can't, you can't do. So I, I think it, it really requires a lot of strength and a lot of, uh, can I say, you sobriety that you, you think, okay, you tell yourself, I will do what my heart tells me to do. I will listen to myself and my family, and then you, you, you go with it. And, uh, and that's what I did. I went uh, through the whole cycle. And uh, after that, I was really um, grateful that when I did my last uh, treatment and the doctor tested and gave me a clean, clean bill of health, I was really, really grateful. And, and I knew something to do. It is not easy. There are those moments that you are down. There are moments that you're very low. But uh, somehow you just Things that can can encourage you and uh, just um, make you hang hang in there. One thing I didn't allow myself to do is to have self pity or why me or everybody. So you must have uh, offended God. That's why you're in this or this. I not allow myself to walk that path. I told myself I am. This is it. I just told. I just prayed and I just would kind of have conversations with God and I say, okay, you. I will go through it, God, but you must, you must be with me. I want to feel your presence. And somehow I would be calm and my things just would go smoothly. And I, I felt that God was uh, with me in this and, and I was very, very grateful. Of course, um, for family, it is, it is also very challenging. Of course, you can imagine that, that your life has to go. Now your life is uh, upside down. I can't do the things I, I used to do before. I wouldn't even be able to cook for my family. I wouldn't uh, be able to attend, um, let's say there's an open day in my son's school. I, I can't go, I can't do that. Um, in school, I have events, I have things to do, and at times I am really down, but I, I, just, I just have to do it. So it's challenging uh, with a good support system. It's doable.
ecosystem could be your um, family, it could be your friends, it could be your colleagues. You could also be able to join um, a group. I, rem I remember I joined uh, Limao Cancer Group and, and people would, uh, you know, um, encourage each other. You, you're done with the second chemo. You say, oh, I'm done with chemo and everybody's cheering you on. And somehow it just lifts you up. Other times they bring um, maybe an oncologist on, uh, on uh, I mean, a session with an oncologist. You can be able to ask questions and somehow it just keeps you going. So um, I think you have already accepted that this is it. You have to go through it, fight with your mind and tell yourself you're going to make it, surround yourself with a good uh, support so that people can be able to encourage you. Then it is, it is really doable. And uh, as you're saying this, um, since today we are talking about nutrition, I think that's, that's what is very key in your path or your journey to, to healing. Your well-being, your wellness, mental, physical, and this food or whatever you're eating, nutrition is key. I remember for me, it was really a challenge because there are things I had to give up and things that I, I love. I have a sweet tooth. So the cakes and the biscuits, cookies and all those chocolates, I love, I love those things. Even my, my students knew, anybody with a birthday, bring a piece of cake to Mrs. Mugwa, and that's it. But I had to give up some of the things I, I loved eating, of course, um, those uh, the sweet things or the cakes and all. I had to also give up sugar. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't now take uh, sugar anymore. I had to go easy on, on, um, on uh, some of the, I mean, like the meat and especially the red meats. So I kind of almost stopped taking the red meats. I was just on, uh, on the white meats. I loved bread. So this time I kept uh, bread out. And um, I would take things like, uh, you know, the nguashes, you know, um, the, uh, I would take nguashes. I would take uh, um, things like um, arrowroot, etc. So it, it is something you really need to switch. Oh, and I remember I loved uh, my cup of tea with the, of course, the majani, the, with lots of sugar and, and, and milk. And of course, now I had to do the green tea. Okay, I can't say that I, I never, um, I can't say that I wasn't keen on my vegetables and fruit. I just eat the normal, you know, just the one day, um, just taking, let's say, like uh, fruits, I would take once a day. Okay, at least every meal, I make sure even then I had vegetables. But now this required you to eat plenty, you know, plenty, plenty, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. And I had even now to include even some fruits that I wasn't really so keen on before, you know, like um, taking custard apple, taking kiwi, you know, and lots of berries and, and those kind of things. So it, um, it is uh, something that you need to, but um, the one thing I realized is that you don't really need to like overstretch. The, the, like the, if it's like something like vegetables, you just do the traditional vegetables, lots of uh, sukuma, you know, um, spinach and, and so on and so forth. And the fruits also, you can uh, rely on the fruits in the season and then you can throw in other fruits there. And, and somehow you, you're able to, to make it and have lots of uh, whole grains and, you know, um, I took a lot of beetroot, carrot and, and apple, something. I, and, and I was so used to it. That was my morning, the first thing I did morning, that was my morning drink. And then uh, I'll do it again later in the evening. And, and actually, even after I was well, I, I took that as a, my morning drink for quite some time. It's just now, now that I have uh, given it up for now. And I, I learned to take uh, a lot, lot, I mean, nuts, I learned to take seeds, you know, the pumpkin, the sunflower, the, you know, I did flax seeds, I did, you know, some of the things that I wasn't doing before. And, and now I am, I mean, I, I began that. So I am, in, in, uh, in short, uh, nutrition plays or played a very big a very big role in, in your recovery, in your healing. There are those moments uh, when, especially when you're doing chemotherapy and you don't want to, like, um, I mean, you, you, you really don't have appetite, your appetite is really down. 
at times there are certain foods you you just can't stand and at times you have no, nausea and you, you throw up and all that so um what um what we were being advised is that you can just eat a little but keep eating oftenly you know just keep taking a little a little and uh what uh, really again that uh and still on nutrition was the water water is life i like you know you just see that phrase water is life for sure mm -hmm. water is life you take water you drink water of course it's gonna flush out all the toxins in your body but you you really need that just that water so i learned also to take lots of water which i still do even now and uh, generally yes um, I think that's, that's really um, what I can say. And uh, just to keep, I mean, I always uh, want to encourage somebody else because um, when, when I was in that uh, situation or during my cancer journey, I longed to hear of a survivor. I wanted to see a survivor. I wanted to hear the, the story of a survivor. I wanted to see somebody who is, has, has been there and done with it and they're good. So I always say I'll also take that chance if I get an opportunity to talk to people or to just uh, say a word whenever I can, just tell uh, people out there, yes, it's tough. It's usually shocking. It's confusing. It, it's really expensive also to just um, go through it. But it is, it is doable. You can be able to do it a day at a time and somehow you, you get out of it. And, uh, I am happy that uh, I am a survivor and uh, I can only thank God for his graces and, and for coming out of this. So thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Magdalene, for sharing your story. Uh, now, I want you to, guys to, if you have questions, uh, kindly type your questions and uh, I'll, be, I'll be just uh, shooting them out to Magdalene. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed, you know, I, I think many people are shocked. Oh, so survivors can look as pretty as you look, you know, uh, on, the, on the screen. And, and that's very inspiring. And we, and we like your smile. Now, now Magdalene, can you remind us how, how, how long has it been since you were diagnosed with cancer? I was diagnosed in... Uh... October 2016, and uh, so this is uh, my fourth year. I, I took about two years uh, under, undergoing treatment, and from then on, so it, it's I, I can say as as uh, after I've been given a clean bill of health, it's actually it two has years. been two years. Yes, so it has been it has it has been as as this far it has been a four year journey. Okay, yes. two years of treatment, but but and, and two years. As, as a server. Uh, okay, uh, let, me, let me shoot this one as I wait for people to, I can, I can see uh, uh, people on the keyboard. Uh, I will, I'll read your, I'll read your, uh, your remarks uh, shortly. Uh, but one of, the, one of the big things that, uh, that most people are dealing with, uh, uh, especially uh, cancer, uh, you know, we have seen issues uh, of big pandemics. Uh, let's start with HIV and AIDS and cancer and now COVID-19. The biggest thing that we are worried about is stigma. Uh, uh, so, so Mag, how did you deal uh, with that? Did, how did you deal with that? Okay, um, uh, I, of course I know um, when one has cancer, Anyway, anyway, let me just say that uh, everybody looks at cancer as that's a death sentence. They are almost now just so what next? You you won't go, you won't be with us. I mean, or you you you're going to die soon. And uh, got and I could see even some some my friends or people would come and visit, and I can see the shock on this, and it's just that they can't you know voice it or say that you you know th this will happen. But I, I just, um, as I said, I, I really used a lot on my mind. And I also used to pray a lot, okay? Because, of course, once in a while you will see somebody um, maybe like even post something insinuating like, okay, you have cancer. I mean, are you, are you aware you have cancer? You are just, I mean, you're not okay. Are you, you know? And uh, I remember one time a friend of mine came and I was 
talking to, I mean, I was just giving my story to somebody and she, she, later she asked me like, I mean, you, I mean, you're not, you're not like, um, you're not even scared of talking about it or telling people or telling people, you know, that you, you have, you have cancer. But as, as, as you've said, just that st the, the stigma itself, I, I just, can I say, use my mind to, I refused to get down or I refused it to get up. Yes, I am a cancer fighter. I could see, of course, the look, even when my hair fell off, I, my nails fell off. You can see like your, I mean, you can see even if people don't tell you, you can read from their faces what, what is going through them. But I kept, I kept on, I, I read a lot and I also did a lot of uh, motivational, listening to motivational stuff. I read a lot. I listened to a lot of uh, um, uh, Christian music. I used to pray. I used to read the Bible. I used to do all those things. So I just somehow, you know, blocked it from my mind that, okay, I know it is true. You can, with cancer, it can go either way. But I told myself that I am going to make it and I will get out of this thing. And I was so eager to get out of it. And I kept on talking, you know, speaking about it, that I will get out of it and I am, I am, I am going to get back, my life back. So that's how I just uh, dealt with it. But of course, as you, you were saying, it is there. Even if people don't tell you or they're not talking about it, you can see from their faces, conversations, the kind of things people send you, you know. Uh, on, and all of a sudden on your WhatsApp is full with all cancer things and cancer stories and all, you know. But somehow you just need uh, to keep a very, um, can I say, a very positive uh, outlook of the whole thing and a positive Awesome. Uh, but your mindset, even during cancer, wow. Uh, someone else is saying powerful educative testimony. Water is the life. We are grateful. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing uh, uh, someone saying very inspiring story. Uh, truly, our God is a God of impossibility. Your courage and faith is very inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story. Someone else is great testimony. Uh, I have a question for you, Magdalene. Uh, 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 Peter is asking, was it taking place in the country or Kenya? No, I did my treatment here in this country, in Kenya. I didn't go out, I just did everything here. Okay, is it okay if you told us where? Oh yes, I, I, did, my, I did the whole treatment at Aga Khan University Hospital, that's where I did it. So it's possible to actually uh, go through treatment here and four years down the line, you're still here, you're, you're still smiling. Uh, uh, one is saying thank you for sharing, uh, quite inspiring. Uh, may you continue to enjoy supernatural divine health. I'm Wangi. Wangi, can I just say something about yes. the, the positive mind? Eh? Yes. I I I am uh, I I like uh, somebody is saying wow even at this you can you can be positive huh? I think this is something yeah. you will and purpose of course you can imagine and we are all at different places I mean um and we are we are all endowed different so there is somebody who I'm telling you they will not be able to get there or to try and just positive or have just that positive mindset but what I'm trying to say is that let, let's try. Not, not only cancer, what it is you're going through, even today with COVID, I think your mindset really plays a big game. And you can just start little, just start little, believing that you're going to heal, telling yourself you will okay, it's going to be okay, and, and all those uh, things that you can be able to tell yourself. Oh, great, uh, great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Mbogwa. Uh, someone is, did the doctor, when the doctor brought news, you said you told the doctor just say it as it is you know uh, did the doctor tell you what stage it doctor say what stage your cancer was before the surgery um okay when i now when he got the results from the biopsy and of course uh, I, I i suspected because you know the way they start from afar oh your estrogen your prostate i don't know so many things i just told him just tell me so he, he really said, I'm getting there. And he just told me that you have cancer and uh, it is, uh, we are going to treat you. You will be fine. 
And then he just, the, the thing now that shocked me most is what he told me, but for sure from what I can see now, you're not at stage one. So we need to do a, a, a CT scan for us to be able to establish the stage. So then that's what I did the following day. So as I went now the following day, I was just waiting to hear what stage is it. And I was just praying that, oh God, I, I, I really want to leave. I don't want, I, I need more years. And you know, I kept on thinking, oh, my son is just in form too. I mean, I was just thinking of so many things. And then when I, he just told me that uh, it is at stage three and he told me what we'll need to do. And then he told me, and then so I will be able to link you up with an oncologist. Then you will be able to start, start your treatment. Awesome, awesome. Uh, before I let you go, I think there's a, a question from Sharon in terms of insurance. And they're asking, is, is, there, is there an insurance that covers for chemotherapy? Okay, uh, did you get, did you, were you medic, did you, did you have a medical cover? Uh, how did you go about it? Okay, uh, I, yes, I had a medical cover and I also had the in, in HIF. And I'm telling you, you know, that's the, the, the one time I really, really appreciated NHIF. You know, even the time we were told, oh, NHIF has gone higher, we need to pay, I don't know, a thousand and what, and I was really, I mean, but I, I really, um, appreciated that because it, I really did a lot with the with the NHF. Actually, believe it or not, my all my chemotherapy sessions I did with NHIF, not even my insurance. And then they would uh, and and they would just I would just feel like anybody else. Fill a form, it's approved. I go after a while. Oh, they have approved three hundred thousand. They have approved. And you know, and, and that was it. I, I didn't know anybody. I, I was just, I just filled the forms as is, send them. That was it. So I did a lot with the NHIF. And of course, even uh, the insurance also really did help. It really did help. Because you see, there are so many tests that you need to do. Before you even do your, let's say, your chemotherapy, you need to do the blood works. You need to do blood tests. So again, you see, you need uh, at least if you, I mean, if you have an insurance, the outpatient would cover that. Then um, for the chemotherapies, then the inpatient, it, it was like a, an inpatient, uh, one day inpatient uh, treatment. So it, I just managed that way. Awesome, awesome. Asante Sana, amazing. Uh, what a wonderful, uh, inspiring story there from um, Magdalene Bogwa. I believe that you've enjoyed it. I am seeing uh, the charts going ablaze with uh, just saying what an inspiring story, what a testimony. God is powerful. You are such an inspiration. Uh, so thank you for accepting to sit on the panel tonight. Uh, we will continue, but before uh, we will not let uh, Magdalene go. At some point, we might have a, a, a question or two for her. Uh, so kindly stay around, stay around. Uh, Eunice tell, says that uh, we thank God for your journey and the courage to be that person who can come back and support others as a, as a survivor. May God continue granting you more grace uh, to motivate others to fight bravely as you did. So thank you so much for the inspiring story. I want also to highlight, uh, we have a doctor uh, who is attending the session. Uh, by the way, this is our second candid conversation. Uh, okay, like I said last time, if we, if we fumble a bit, kindly bear with us, uh, but we are all in a learning season. We are trying our very best. Dr. Mary Mogambi is saying that she can offer help for a child with cancer as uh, she's a doctor in nutrition, di di dietetics, whoa, uh, specializes on children. Her email number, if you are looking at the chats, it's there, nkmogambi at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Um, we appreciate your help. Uh, I want to remind all of us that this forum is one to spread positivity and, and also encourage one another. We are in tough season, uh, in a tough season uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, you know, the others, 
the other things how life has to go on uh, but we need to keep a smile on and uh, and just push on with life let's 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 be let's the journey together and and we will we will survive and get out to on the other side uh, ladies and gentlemen i want to remind you uh, that uh, uh, here at uh, Outburst, the BCC, we support the uh, hospice in Kenya. And so uh, the, the past four years, we have been supporting uh, the Gio Hospice in Kiambu County. Uh, so, uh, and so that's where we, we, we push our support. Uh, people living uh, uh, there, they need palliative care and we, just, and we just support them. And so we'll be telling more uh, to, we'll be talking more about that in a short while. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to invite a nutritionist uh, who is from KNW Limited, uh, and she will talk to us uh, on nutrition and <coughs> cancer in COVID-19. Uh, so she will not only tell us on what to eat uh, if you have cancer. I think Magdalene has touched a lot about that, and thank you, Magdalene, for a good job. Uh, but the nutritionist will also tell us what to eat, how to do that, uh, especially during this COVID-19 19 times. And so, ladies and gentlemen, like we did before, put your hands together like this uh, for none other than Katha Wenda, kindly, and uh, Katha. Good, e good evening, how are you? Great, um, Nkatha. Karibu sana. Uh, great, okay. My name is Nkatha Mwenda, and um, I'm a nutritionist by profession. I hold a Bachelor of Science degree in nutrition, uh, foods dietetics. So we just talk more about what food does to our body and what we need to do to have optimal health. I'm so glad... Um, uh, Magdalene was able to share her story and uh, you know the highlight of her story is the victory that she is cancer free and we thank God for that but also the victory uh, the revelation there is when she said she she got confused the doctor would tell her to eat this way and then uh, the nutritionist would tell her to eat this way but all in all she was able to get into a program where um, uh, she was able to benefit in a positive way, eating a lot of fruits, the green tea and nuts. And um, I will be speaking on that. But before even I talk about that, you know, we are talking about cancer in general and um, COVID in general. And what it does is it beats down the immune system. So if you have a weak immune system, then your, your body functions fail. And that's where nutrition comes in. I like to ask, you know, whoever I interact with, do we eat to live or do we live to eat? Ask yourself that question. Are you eating to live or living to eat? The obvious answer is we eat to live. And why are we eating? We are eating to get nutrients the body needs. Just like water is life. You're, you're, you're drinking water because you're almost 75% water. If you're not feeding yourself with that water, then the body will not function at its optimal. The same way your brain is 60% fat. If you're not giving it the good kind of fat you get in fish, the, the unsaturated fats, then obviously you will have a challenge uh, uh, with the brain and the central nervous system. So it's in the same way that nutrition is key for optimal health and for us to be able to prevent cancer or strengthen our immune system. And when we go through cancer, I, I know because I've seen, and, uh, and Mag Magdalene has mentioned, the, the, the drugs, the chemo makes you go through quote-unquote health because most people who go through chemo uh, will go through so many side effects they will vomit they can put hold food down and remember as you go through chemo you're supposed to be eating to replenish but now here is uh, side effects that are so uncomfortable whereby you're vomiting uh, you have a dry mouth you have a sore throat I mean eating is the last thing on your mind but if you want to live, you need to do what you need to eat. So uh, uh, in Kenya, we are guided as nutritionists as well. We have a body called the Kenya Nutritionists and Dietetics Institute, and it's, uh, it was passed by law in 2007. So it guides us and regulates us as professionals in the industry. And that's why in all institutions, in hospitals, you will find nutritionists to guide you and especially when you get uh, medical, when you get sick, 
uh, because different diseases need, need different attention. So what is this we are being told we need to do? We need to eat um, foods that will protect ourselves. Anytime you want to boost your immunity, you want to eat those foods that um, are rich in nutrients naturally. They are antioxidants. We are looking at vitamin A, C, E. Most of this you will get in fruits and vegetables. I'll go into detail, a little detail about the fruits and vegetables. And I remember there is once uh, someone influential the other day was talking <laughs> and her video went viral because she attacked men and asked them, men, when was the last time you ate fruits and vegetables? And in an African perspective, let's just talk about that a little. Uh, there are some foods that are, are perceived. They're not for men. Uh, these foods are for children. This perception about foods, this chicken, is, this part is not for women. It's this and this. But now we need to demystify all that, that for us to be healthy, number one, we need to get foods that are nutritionally dense. I'll give you an example very clearly. Many people love bread. And the bread that is most popular at home will be white bread. Why? Because it is sweet. But I want us to switch, you know, because sweet means sugar, means inflammation. What does inflammation mean? It means your immune system is always extra active trying to fight uh, inflammation in the cells, reducing your immunity and keeping you um, uh, damaging your cells. So what we are saying is, why are we stopping to eat this processed foods, white bread, white rice, anything that is processed, why are we avoiding? To avoid inflammation and uh, and to avoid things that will challenge your immune system. So what are we going to start eating? Or what are we encouraged to continue eating? Is the whole grains. Whole grains contain fiber. Whole grains contain a range of vitamins and minerals. Whole grains, because of the bulk of fiber, will not spike your sugar levels in your body. Therefore, you will have all these nutrients delivered into your body. They will not inflame the cells. They will not inflame the body. Therefore, you receive all these nutrients that the body needs and it translates to boosted immunity because the body knows where it needs vitamin A. It, needs, it knows where it needs vitamin C. It knows where it needs all these key nutrients. And if we do not get this from our plate, that is now where your body suffers. That's where the immunity goes low. So when we speak of carbohydrates, we are saying go for whole grains. Whole grains are very important. Forget your white bread, forget your pastries. And many people, just like Magdalene, she loved the, the, she had the sweet tooth, she says. And that's what many of us tend, many people love. Uh, they, they love the cakes, they love the, um, the sweet things. But again, what is that? It is processed, it is sugar. What does it do to the body? It inflames the body. What we want to avoid is inflaming the body and eating foods that are anti inflammatory. Yeah. So when it comes to uh, that group of foods, uh, which is your cereals, we are saying go for whole grains instead of processed. So processed is the white, uh, the, the white bread, white rice, all those. Uh, whole grain is your brown rice. Uh, you acquire a taste towards it. It's actually very filling again because of fiber, a lot of nutrients in it. You can go for the uh, pasta, which is uh, whole. Um, there's that, you can get it in the supermarket. You can go for, for uh, unprocessed grains. Um, you can try um, uh, uh, couscous. We have so many other um, whole grains that you can include into your diet, uh, like oats as well. Oats, those are uh, whole grains. It could be oatmeal, uh, porridge, and things like those. Anything that is not overly processed is going to be much better for you. And um, uh, something, the next group I'll talk about is now the fruits and vegetables. Many of us take fruits and vegetables and um, we are encouraged to eat colors. Take a variety. Magdalene again says there are fruits she never took attention to, but she started eating because she was told the benefits. And just briefly, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about a few colors. I'll give you an example. There, there are some uh, phytonutrients. Why we are also encouraged to go the vegetarian way or go the plant way is because plants contain uh, uh, phytochemicals or phytonutrients that are protective to our bodies. So I'll just give you an example. I'll start with uh, carotenoids. Carotenoids is, the, is, is a green, is a orange pigmentation. 
and it's it's a it's a it's a plant chemical a phytochemical that is present in red orange green fruits and vegetables so when you're told eat more carrots what are you getting from the carrots you're getting carotenoids which are protective and they have been known to uh, slow or inhibit cell uh, cancer cell growth because they boost the immunity so people um, you, you you don't have to have cancer but even now as we speak of covid how are you going to boost your immunity go for your carrots go for your popo go for your uh, butternuts anything orange red um uh, lycopenes um also which is a red pigmentation is present in tomatoes they are very beneficial because they protect your cells so as we even put food on our table we want to aspire to have um uh, even if it is a raw vegetable salad in every meal even breakfast when you're having your breakfast you 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 can have your oats and a bowl of of vegetable salads you know you can cut a few tomatoes grate a few carrots and then sprinkle a little vegetable oil squeeze um uh, uh, sprinkle a little olive oil squeeze a little lemon and that's your meal because you want to have five to nine servings of vegetables in the day how will you be able to achieve that it is by eating it at every meal at lunchtime include some vegetables um, you can make it uh, raw vegetables don't sound exciting but you can make a dressing that is healthy using oils not fat mayonnaise tends to be uh, anything that is solid at room temperature as a fat is a fat and it's not good for you go for anything that is liquid at room temperature that's where you have your coconut oil your olive oil amongst other things but we are saying those are the orange red colored when you look at apples why apples are very good is because they have flavonoids and flavonoids are known to uh reduce inflammation you remember what causes inflammation in the foods that i mentioned earlier so apples have ability to uh, reduce inflammation and tumor growth that's science that's what these foods are doing to us so an apple a day like the doctors are saying will keep the doctor away is true because apples are full of nutrients they have um, soluble fiber they have um, pectin which is good for digestion they have the flavonoids and they are there enabling the body um to 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 help even produce detoxifying enzymes in the body so apples citrus fruits uh those are, i'm mentioning the food fruits that have flavonoids they are the apples they are citrus fruits onions i'm a fan of onions you find me eating an onion like a fruit i just soak it a little in salted water and i chew i don't mind the smell i i got over how my breath will smell but it's what i'm getting from this food that i'm eating so onions if you can even throw onions in your salads uh, or if you're cooking with onions don't overcook them because they are rich also in the flavonoids we have soya beans we have even that coffee that has been detested and and the tea but we're not saying now keep drinking coffee and tea the caffeine or high levels of caffeine in coffee and tea is what makes them unpopular but if taken in moderation it's not too bad because of the flavonoids that are contained in them again i'm just going overview uh, very quickly we also have um, uh, some plant chemicals and they are called indoles and these ones behave like um, um, hormones in our bodies especially the reproductive hormones like estrogen and things like those and you'll find that commonly in cruciferous vegetables which are these cruciferous vegetables we are talking about cabbage broccoli we are talking about um cauliflower all those the cabbage anything that is in the cabbage family is rich in indoles and uh, they will be able to induce detox for carcinogens so you may be exposed you know we never know even what we are eating something else we we are saying we are exposed to carcinogens it could be from the smoke out there from the exhaust there are so many places it could be herbicides chemicals etc but if we are exposed to that and we are eating these foods that are rich the cruciferous vegetables uh, if we are having them in our diet like the broccoli every day or cauliflower they have been shown uh, 
to 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 work as a flushing out for carcinogens because they mimic also hormones in the body. They are very good for women and men, uh, even as they go through menopause or, uh, or even men as they grow older and the effects of lower testosterone. So when it comes to cancer or challenges like that, they are more preventative. So these are uh, vegetables that you want to increase in your, in your, in your, in your diet. We also uh, have uh, phytic acid. Again, I'm just going briefly through, but I'll mention the, 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 the foods. Eh? We have oats, uh, things like rice, uh, ray, and wheat, and nuts, and soybeans. They're high in uh, uh, phytic acid. And nowadays, when you go to major supermarkets, the first thing you see is a cereal booth. I don't know if you have noticed that. You go to any supermarket, the first thing you'll see is a whole variety of cereals, a whole variety so nowadays, they are more available. We are seeing them as, 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 as we shop. And we are talking about uh, oats, ray, uh, whole rice, the, the whole rice, uh, nuts. Uh, they contain phytic acid, which has been shown um, to work as powerful antioxidants. Again, not an antioxidants. They are protective nutrients towards your, your cells of the body. The mere fact that we breathe in and out and we breathe in oxygen, Already, our cells are exposed to oxidation, but um, but you know, we need oxygen to live. So you need to eat to live by putting into your body nutrients that will protect the cells from oxidation. So antioxidants are your vitamin A, your vitamin C, your vitamin E, and also these plant chemicals or plant nutrients that offer a protection, um, uh, a protection uh, uh, over the cells. Because why are we talking about anti why are we talking about oxidation and inflammation? It is because when your cells become inflamed or they become oxidized, they stop functioning like they would normally. Then they start mutating. That's where the cancer comes from. And it is caused because of um, an abnormal uh, state in your body. Normal would be you giving it all these nutrients that it needs. But it's abnormal because there's deficiencies everywhere because we are not getting this fruits and vegetables. We're not getting this range of nutrients from whole grains. We are, we are eating too many processed food, even when we are coming to protein, because I'm moving to protein um, uh, very soon, uh, the next food group. Uh, then it interferes with metabolism and all that. So when we are talking about what you're getting in these foods, it is just for your knowledge, so that the next time you're shopping, I know this is good for me. I know this is uh, going to be protective for this and this to prevent a condition. And anyone who's going through uh, chemo or radiotherapy or any kind of treatment, even drugs, um, uh, antibiotics, or even if they have had COVID, then they're going through the medication. New food we, is, uh, is, is very important. And hence, this particular food we are talking about to boost their immunity so that they have better fighting ability. When you don't get the foods that you're eating, you end up being malnutrition. When you get malnutrition, then thriving comes to halt and you move on, you know, you go to the next life. That's why nutrition is very, very important. Many of us eat based on taste. I, I, my prayer, even when I was talking to Mwangi, my prayer is, I may speak all this, but even me at times I have my weaknesses. I eat off but I remind myself, what are the benefits of these foods? Uh, why am I eating them now? It's because I want to live a longer, healthier life. Again, even as we go through this uh, challenging times of COVID, is where now we are valuing life even more. Because what is this virus that has come? You don't see it. You don't know it. It's being transferred through the air. So you have to be cautious. And when you get it, I mean, it's it's devastating. So life is so precious. So better make sure that your body is well equipped, is functioning right, so that if you are exposed to, you can fight it off. And then we are talking about uh, the green tea. I'll move on again. I'll move on to the next nutrients. Uh, Ma uh, Magdalene said she's gotten used to green tea. And uh, what green tea, grapes, wine, berries, uh, citrus fruits, apples, whole grains, and peanuts have is uh, something called uh, uh, polyphenols. And these have um, 
an antioxidant effect. They fight uh, mutation. What we are saying is green tea, grapes, wine, um, berries, uh, citrus fruits, apples, whole grains, and peanuts on cancer to mention we were talking about and also work at, as an antioxidant. So these are foods that you can include in your, in your diet. I'm quick to go back to the wine. The wine, you know, uh, again, Kenya <laughs> is known to be a drinking nation because you know there's a company that keeps, after the telco, there's a company that also rates a lot of profits. So it's obvious Kenya is a drinking nation. But it's to say that alcohol is one of the, the things, you know, alcohol and tobacco use are some of the things that also compromise our health. So even when I say wine, this is non-alcoholic wine. You can enjoy a, a, a non-alcoholic wine because I'll mention also briefly the things that we are told by um, health bodies. If, if you can stop drinking alcohol, the better. But if you have to drink, do it in moderation because alcohol in itself is a toxic element. It, it, it challenges your immunity. It, alcohol, uh, you know what it does to the liver. You know, if it has to be detoxified, it means it's a toxic element. So uh, alcohol, things like uh, tobacco use, but we are saying uh, green tea, grapes, wine, as a variety, various citrus fruits, apples contain certain plant nutrients that are protective uh, to your cells and uh, are beneficial to you. Then we also have, um, you'll, you'll notice many people use uh, lemon, rind, orange peel in marmalades or even in food cookery. And it's because the outer part of these citrus fruits contain uh, plant nutrients as well that uh, protect the cells, the cells. So again, they may not taste so good. Yeah, they may not taste so good. They may not even seem practical to eat, but this is just a range of, of, of fruits and vegetables based, you're told, eat colors, purple, blue, green, orange, so that you can get all this abundance of protection. Then we, we come back to how practical is it, yeah? How practical is it? If it's not practical for you to get the fruits and vegetables every day, we are saying we can, we can, um, we can, uh, we, we, we can then, if, if eating the vegetables in raw form or in a stew is not possible, you can juice them. But we are saying when you use the juicer, there's the roughage that is left on the outer part. Don't get rid of the roughage because the reason you're eating fruits and vegetables is that roughage. Then you can juice it and get that roughage back into your clear juice and take it together as a complete meal or better still use a blender so that you don't throw out anything because anytime we are eating fruits and vegetables is to get fiber fiber is not present in any animal foods fiber is pro important for elimination in terms of your digestive system if you're not eliminating after eating three times a day if you're not eliminating at least twice or thrice there's a problem and you'll pin it back to the lack of eating fruits and vegetables or even the whole grains. So in a nutshell, what I'm saying, it's important we introduce or uh, reintroduce plant-based because they, they not only contain lots of uh, protective nutrients, but they contain fiber that will keep your bowel healthy so that you don't have any fecal matter staying in your system that can even act as carcinogens. So guys, we are saying drink a lot of water, at least two liters, you know, depending on your, even your weight and age. Eh? Drink eight glasses of water minimum. Eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Eat whole grains, legumes, and even pulses. Reduce on your animal-based foods because animal-based cause inflammation in the body, like I mentioned what inflammation is. Then you will you'll be on the right track on live your, living a healthier life. And it is easy again to say, to speak. And that's why we say, be positive about it. Put it out as a plan. I want to eat healthy. What do I need to do? Set goals. If you're overweight, you say, let me manage my weight. Because weight is also something Magdalene will share with you. Doctors are pinning to the cause of 
cancer, if your BMI is above 25, meaning you're carrying excess weight for your body frame, then we need to consider reducing it. So if your BMI, which is your body mass index, you take your weight in kilograms and divide by your height in meter square. If you find a score that is more than 25, you can decide, let me work on becoming leaner. And in that gradual process, I'm making the food choices that will introduce protective nutrients into my, into my system. And I know because I'm consciously taking this good, uh, rich, nutrients, uh, nutrient-dense foods, I know my health or my immune system is up. Then I exercise regularly. Especially during these COVID times, many people have been indoors. Uh, people who are used to a, 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 an active lifestyle have been forced into a sedentary lifestyle. You need to introduce new ways of physical activity so that, um, so that um, we are active. We are active uh, because exercise helps uh, in, uh, uh, increase our metabolism. Exercise is good for the heart. It's good for alertness. It's good for the brain. It even helps better circulation of nutrients through the body. And using now the diet, which is your plate, using physical exercise, even 30 minutes a day will help. It could be skipping. Whatever choice, whatever exercise you choose is very important. And then managing your weight. You will find you will be ahead when it comes to preventing cancer. Yeah? Preventing cancer and, 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 and also ensuring that your immune system is in check. Uh, I mentioned protein. I, I, I will just talk a bit for another two minutes uh, as I finalize. Proteins. Proteins are very important because proteins are building blocks. If you lack proteins in your day-to-day -day diet, then we are, you're, you're, you're causing your body a, dis, uh, uh, a disservice because protein is the building blocks to your body. It is responsible for feeding all your organs. You know, it's feeding the cells of the body. So good quality product, uh, pro, uh, protein is emphasized. You can go for your fish, you know, fish because of its good fat is encouraged. You're told to eat salmon, you're told to eat um, fish three times in a week. Why? It is a, it, it, it's good quality uh, uh, source of, of amino acids, which are bleeding box for the body. And also it has the omega-3, which is good fat for the brain. So um, uh, fish is a good option. We have chicken. Chicken is also good. It's white meat. Again, you're told, cut out the skin. Why? When you look at any uh, chicken, the sweetest part or the fattest part is normally the skin and under it. So why are you adding that physical fat into your body? It's not necessary. So get rid of the skin. Red meat, we are saying, causes inflammation. And if you have to eat it, let's do it sparingly. And which kind of red meat are you eating in the first place? It is the one that is a lean cut. If there is fat, I know in, in, in Kenya or even in, it's not even just in Africa, it's everywhere. The sweetest meat, especially put on the grill, is the fattiest. Mwangi, you'll agree with me that nyamachoma is not nyamachoma if it is lean. No. But now you're taking a conscious, you're making a conscious decision to cut out saturated flat fats. And anything that is solid at room temperature is not good for you. And then the protein, then uh, uh, the plant-based protein is actually what is best for us. You can eat your black beans, your kidney beans, a variety, soya beans. You have your kamande, you have your um, green grams. You, you have a long list of, of, of um, grains, uh, of the beans that give you the, the protein that builds your blocks and even adds you fiber in the process. So it's just a matter of saying, um, I want to make healthier choices. What do I do? I will increase my food, fruit and, uh, fruits and vegetables intake. I will minimize on the processed carbohydrates, processed meat, because there's processed meat in the form of the hot dogs, frankfurters, sausages, all those that have so much saturated fat. You know, the issue here is the saturated fat. 
saturated fat is not good for you it, uh, and even for the blood yeah too much cholesterol so which one are we going for any fat that is liquid at room temperature is most ideal and um i just like to mention whenever you go to the supermarket you will notice i'm not mentioning brands eh? but whenever you go to the supermarket at times um there are these ones they'll call it vegetable oil they'll call it cholesterol free but you know they have no place of saying cholesterol free because plants don't have cholesterol uh, you know cholesterol is not present there yeah but what saddens me is there is this process uh, called hydrogenation which converts the oil which is how plant oil come out naturally it is in liquid form but for commercial purposes they solidify it and they solidify it into and and uh, uh, hydrogen through hydrogenation and trans fats trans fats are not good for you so you'll find uh, because everyone is going for liquid liquid oils they will package in a different color clear bottle so that you will buy it because it is vegetable oil but that when you're using this container that is concealed so ideally you are not taking a vegetable oil so fats that is that very important in um we just need to to be positive uh how to be candid about how we are eating if you smoke if you over inflammation throughout we said we don't want to inflame the body you're exposing yourself to uh, a risk of so many uh, uh, diseases in your body so if you if you can do things in moderation reduce alcohol intake reduce smoking or tobacco use those ones have been linked to cancer that will be ideal then introduce nutrient dense foods into your diet i also like to talk about supplementation because it is a hot topic and uh, supplements um, are what they are supplements what is a supplement it is an add on there are, there are people who um, take supplements and say ah that will substitute the fruits and vegetables i was to take no way the best thing is take from a food source your fruits and vegetables if you know you're not getting all your required nutrients from your plates then you need to add you need to add a supplement there are people who are not able to eat fish three times in a in a week so obviously an omega 3 supplement which is very important for the brain central nervous system the hormonal systems for men women you know because there's the endocrine uh, system which uh, hormones are, are, are produced and you need the good quality you the good kind of fats so an omega-3 supplement is advised because if you're not able to eat fish three times in a day where are you getting omega-3 you know so you need to ask yourself such questions am i getting enough uh, uh probiotics to support my gut am i eating fermented foods to ensure my gut is going proper you know you can opt for things like uh, that also some herbs and spices that have known to protect the cells of the body or to boost the immunity things like garlic those are known turmeric they are known to boost immunity wheat grass it is a green food together with moringa and those things are you putting them into your diet but you will realize either way even if you try the most to put everything on your plate you might need to supplement but you need to do it with the knowledge that knowledge knowing what am i taking this for and what are the benefits and are they organic are they organic these supplements as well because in a situation like a cancer patient who's not able to eat at all who is throwing up 
for me in my situation because i have handled quite a number of them i i use a protein shake an already pre prepared meal and they are fed a liquid which has all these nutrients i'm just giving you examples of how some supplements can be very beneficial for some people there are people who are so sick they have diarrhea they have constipation anything they eat they can't maintain in then you have to revert to um other ways to ensure they get these key nutrients into their bodies um and finally um i want to share a story um i have um i i there's a gentleman i met and um he's going through what i do as a nutritionist i advise i do talks but also we do um meal plans and even do shopping for clients and even train on how to cook amongst other things so i met a client um not too long ago and what worried me was just like any other person um this man had a headache that couldn't go for five years the first year he goes to the doctor he's complaining of this headache he's given medication the pain goes he forgets about it finally um last year he said i'm tired you know i'm not leaving this doctor i'm not he told the doctor i'm not leaving this uh office until you tell me what is causing my headache because i take medication it is okay but then uh it comes back and so they ordered an mri and after doing it they discovered he had a tumor in his brain and uh what i'm just leading at is many at times you find um you get a discomfort somewhere even your skin starts discoloring and you brush it off or you have a sore throat and you brush it off what i'm just encouraging us let's not wait for our symptoms to get to an extreme you know where you need critical attention let's work on it when it happens when you notice uh you're breathing different or when you notice you have a headache that's not going don't assume we mostly self-diagnose and go over the counter and get medication for ourselves but why the body is telling you through pain is for you to address the issue so uh, i would want to encourage you to just be more conscious about um how your body is how your body is talking to you through pain or even as you you just orientate yourself with your body just as magdalene said one day she was just she was just um she just discovered yeah how how often do we massage our bodies or just investigate our bodies you know it's important to just be curious about what's happening in our bodies and not ignore uh, anything abnormal because when you ignore the issue can be blown up or even it can become a, a, crit a critical issue in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can talk the whole day. I can talk the whole day. I know you are very passionate <laughs> about nutrition and yeah. keeping healthy. I just want to, to be sensitive and, and stick to our Tisana. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you for logging in. I want to remind you that uh, our, our, our uh, awareness campaign is normally uh, that you eat right, you do physical, you engage in physical activity, that is exercise, uh, go for cancer screening, keep hope alive, and, and let's all stay healthy. It's even tougher in these COVID uh, times. And, and ladies and gentlemen, let's support one another, let's stay positive. And, 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 and let's keep it real here at, at uh, Candid Conversation. Uh, before I do our parting shot uh, with our panelists, uh, uh, Nkatha, what time should we, should we take dinner? What time should we take dinner? The earlier the better. You know, you don't want to take a, a meal and then go to sleep. You need a few hours to stretch out before you sleep. So if you used to sleeping okay. at nine, you know, eat your meal at six thirty seven, but don't eat at nine to sleep at nine thirty. Yeah. Bernadette says very informative. Thank you. Uh, Judy says it's very insightful. Uh, but uh, someone asked, what about this chia seeds and 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 those uh, type? Hello. 
You can hear me? Oh. Hello. Chia seeds are very important. They are rich in in the good oils and rich and, and also fiber. They're very good. So is pumpkin seeds and all those seeds. They're rich in essential fatty acids and also the fiber and high in minerals, zinc amongst other things. Okay. There are foods maybe I didn't mention, and um, there are superfoods. There are so many I may not have mentioned. But yes, chia seeds, uh, well, many seeds, a variety of seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. You can get those, you can roast them and you know, throw them in your cereal in the morning, or you can blend them and throw them um, with other with a yogurt and drink it as a, as, as, a, as a smoothie, you know, there's a range of, 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 of foods I may not have mentioned, but they are rich. And if you have been taking them, then that's, 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 that's great. someone is asking when is the best time to eat fruits you know I advise people eat fruits as a meal on its own yeah eat fruits at, at the time uh, so it can be before it's best before before meals i know many a times people take it as a dessert but it's good to take your fruits before meals they are rich in in so many nutrients and even digestive and, and they help in digestion so you eat the fruits first Take some time and then you eat your main meal. Yeah. Foods are best. Mm. Awesome. Asante, Asante Sana and Katha. Very passionate about health. Uh, I have learned a lot from her. I have tried to, ex uh, to, to exercise those things that she uh, is advising. But the most important thing that I have learned tonight is set a nutritional goal. Set a goal for you. What do you how do you want to look? What do you want to put in your body? Uh, because remember, gee, go garbage in. Uh, garbage out guys here at uh, the boot cancer challenge we keep challenging you eat right uh, eat right uh, exercise do some workout go for your cancer screening uh, and let's keep hope alive let's stay healthy like we said the most important thing in this season the most successful people are the ones who keep healthy uh, lastly, I just also want to reiterate that this is a social forum. I can see uh, Dr. Mugambi has already reached out to Nkatha, and uh, Nkatha, kindly, could you kindly put your, your type out your email right there? Okay, uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Magdalene Bogwa, I also want to request you uh, to put your, your emails down there. You just never know. Someone might reach out. They need help. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, kindly also give us your feedback and do that at info at outburst.co.ke. Give us your feedback. Out, uh, info at outburst.co.ke uh, or you can also write to boot cancer challenge at outburst.co.ke uh, uh, this uh, year we are taking our boot cancer challenge 
are virtual and we are committed to stay on the course no matter what ours is to support uh, those who are, are, are uh, who are battling cancer those who are caregivers those who are healthy like us let's support them our support every year uh, for the past four years, we have been channeling our support to the hospice here in Kenya, uh, and we have been supporting the Gio Hospice. If you want to support them tonight, kindly, ladies and gentlemen, in your in a small way, in a big way, whatever you, you can do, uh, uh, kindly, we are, are committed to go visit them in August. Uh, remember, because in these COVID times, we cannot quite buy stuff, but we want to support them financially. Uh, so as you can send your, your, your support to our TIL number, and the TIL number is 750822. Uh, our TIL number is right there, 75. 0822. We also uh, will be doing this uh, candid conversations every week on Wednesday uh, from 7 to 8 30. Uh, we, we are promoting, we, we have merchandise uh, that we will be giving out in October. October, you can book yours today or any other time. It's only a thousand shillings. Remember, this is in support of our hospice in Kenya. Uh, we are offering palliative care. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, we will be hosting uh, someone from uh, the Gio Hospital to share with us the work that they are doing on palliative care and we will have a caregiver. A lot of the burden is actually put on caregivers, uh, 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 like uh, Magdalene says, they need support, they need uh, the, the, the people who are unwell need support, uh, but sometimes we forget caregivers and we want to celebrate them next week. Kindly tune in uh, 7 to 8.30. We want to say thank you very much. And right now, I just want to give our panelists a party, to give their parting shot. And I'll start with uh, 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 Mrs. Magdalene Bogwa. Kindly give us a parting shot. Is Magdalene there? I can see her. Kindly unmute, unmute. Yes, I have, I have, I've done so. All right. Um, Go what ahead, I just, Martin. okay. I, what I want to tell um, everybody who is listening or the participants is to get tested. If you get tested, you get to know early, you can be able to um, get treatment and you can be able to overcome that. The next thing to say is go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Drink water, get out, have the sunshine, just eat the fruits, eat the vegetables, and then you will be great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mbogwa. Uh, your parting shot, the um, passionate Nkatha on Mata's <laughs> health, your parting shot. For me, I, I, like I said, just set goals. Um, first, get your BMI, set your goals. Um, make sure it's safe. Um, and when I say safe, is there some people who will find their BMI is too high and they, de they decide I'll starve for 14 days. That's not safe, <laughs> you know? So make it safe, make it positive, and just make it happen step by step. Everything happens gradually. Then always seek the information, yeah? Uh, just look for information because when you make decisions based uh, from a point of knowledge, it is much, much better for you because you have made an informed choice. So let's keep healthy. Yeah, the healthier we are, the better and productive we are. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Nkata. Much appreciated. Uh, mm -hmm. I, and I, we, I, I need you, uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the person attending, kindly give us your parting shot by typing. I will read a few uh, before I give my parting shot. So kindly uh, type your parting shot. You never know. It might just be yours that I will read. Kindly do that. I'm giving you a 10 second to give your parting shot. All right, May, Macy is saying great work and session outburst. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, SK is saying great panel, panelists, keep it up outburst. 
Uh, Regina is saying congratulations for the great work. We are humbled. Thank you so very much. We appreciate, we appreciate, we appreciate. Kindly remember to, to, to follow us also on, uh, on, on all the social, you know, our, our, our social pages, okay? Uh, kindly on Facebook uh, at Outburst Boot Cancer Challenge. Uh, follow us. Uh, uh, Benedict is saying thank you, Outburst. You truly care more. Uh, thank you very much. Kindly remember, if you want to uh, support the work of the hospice here in Kenya, uh, donate, and we will definitely uh, get your support to them. We have been supporting them for the past uh, four years. Uh, COVID, no COVID, it doesn't matter. We have purposed, we want mm -hmm. to stay on course. We want to, we have put a commitment that we will continue to do that, uh, but only with, with your support. Uh, Dr. Mary, you're saying the colorful, uh, the colorful your plate with vegetables together with low fat cooking, the healthier the person. Well done. Thank you very much. For those who have not uh, had their dinner, it's already 8.30 and I want to, uh, it's actually uh, 20 to 9 and from our nutritionists, they say the early the better. i so sorry tonight you'll have to skip your dinner. This is yours uh, truly, Mwangi Chege from Outburst. I want to say thank you so much guys for participating. Thank you for attending. We love you, we love you, we love you. See you here again next week, uh, same time on Wednesday 7 to 8 at 30 and we'll be talking about uh, palliative care in Kenya. Uh, the, we'll be uh, having a panelist, our uh, panelists will be from the Gear Hospice and also a caregiver. Thank you very much. Cheers, bye, thank you very much. Thank you.